Hi everyone, it's Daisy here. Welcome to today's video all about six ways to journal in your unused notebooks. So we're making this video because we recently posted a video recommending some of our journals that we love, our favorite journals. That video is called our top four journals. And I actually have those journals here in front of me in case you missed it. Our top four journals from that video were number one, the MD Notebook. Number two, the Stalogy, um, Stalogy 365 Days Editor Series Notebook. Number three, the Traveler's Notebook. And number four, the Loistrum Notebook. So those were the top four notebooks from our video. And um, in the comments, a lot of you guys were asking for us to make a video actually talking about some of the ways to journal. So um, that's what today's video is going to be all about. There are many different types of journaling that you can actually get into. And um, through conversations with lots of customers in store and just like with friends and with team members, lots of people actually practice multiple types of journaling. Um, if you are just looking to get into journaling, uh, watch this video and you might have some ideas on how you might get started in your journal. And this is also kind of a great way if you have already lots of unused notebooks lying around and you don't know what to do with them, starting one of these journals or two of these journals might actually be a really good way to use up a journal. So hopefully this video helps you guys out if you um, have been looking into journaling or if you just have a lot of unused notebooks lying around and you are looking to make good use of them, which I think a lot of people are guilty of having lots of unused notebooks lying around. First off, I'll say that we're going to be talking about six different ways to journal journal in this video, but throughout all of these different ways, um, journaling prompts can be used along with all of these different methods to help you kind of get started and give you more ideas on what actually to write down in your journal since journaling is all about writing, writing down um, your thoughts, your to-dos, whatever it is. So we will just dive right in to the six different ways that you can journal in unused notebooks, starting off with number one. Number one on my list is just traditional daily journaling. There's not very much explanation needed in this one, and this is kind of like the catch-all for journaling. It's simply writing down maybe um, every night you don't have to do it every night some people do it you know sporadically when they when they feel like doing it just writing down what you did that day what you ate that day who you saw what you did um, things that you thought things that you felt um, and this is a really good way of just kind of like unwinding at the end of the day that's away from a screen it can help you kind of wrap up your day in a really nice way. For me, it definitely does that. Whenever I finish my night with a good journal entry, I feel like I feel a little bit better. I process the day, I process my thoughts, and then it's usually off to bed because I'm doing it at like 11.30 p.m. or midnight, and um, I get sleepy in the process of doing it. So it's like uh, instead of taking a little melatonin gummy, you write in your daily journal, um, your traditional journal, and you kind of uh, wrap up your day in a really nice, slow pace kind of way. So that is number one, not too much explanation at all, pretty straightforward. Let us know in the comments if you are already practicing this uh, traditional daily journal uh, method. Number two on the list of journaling methods is actually called morning pages. This one is really popular. If you haven't heard of it, um, you'll probably hear about it soon if you just Google journaling. So Morning Pages is actually started by, uh, it all came from a book that was written in 1992 called The Artist's Way by um, Julia Cameron. And this book is was kind of like, it talked about a lot, but specifically Morning Pages is supposed to be a journaling method that helps creatives um, overcome like their creative block. 
So the idea is that you, every single day, it's like a ritual that you start. Every single day you wake up a little bit early and you do a stream of conscious type of journaling, which means you're just putting pen to paper and writing long form. So not like in a list, you know, just like actually writing out full sentences of your thoughts. And you're writing for three pages every single day, every morning, just kind of like a brain dump. And this is supposed to be a way for creatives to just kind of reset and also, you know, the idea is to kind of not overthink your art and to just actually write. So don't overthink it, just write down whatever you're thinking, whatever it is. And this can be used along, along with some prompts if required, if you need a little bit of a push. Um, so a lot of people, not just creatives, actually practice morning pages to great success. So they find that they are more motivated, their mind works better. And it's interesting because according to this methodology, you're not supposed to read what your past entries wrote. It's really just supposed to be like a, like a brain dump kind of thing. And you're supposed to reset your brain um, and start off your day in like a better way, I guess. So that's pretty much it, morning pages. I think it's pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple. I can see how it could work to great results for some people because it is like a very, it's a very ritualized practice and um, you do kind of need a little bit of, you know, you, it, it sets, you need a little bit of uh, determination to keep going. So it's kind of like meditation in that way. So that's morning pages and that's number two on the list of ways to journal. And that's another one that I think anyone can get into. You don't have to buy the book to get started. It doesn't have a very lengthy instruction manual or anything like that. You just write three pages every single day in the morning. Don't overthink it, long form writing, and then you start your day. So. Give that one a try and let us know what you think of that one in the comments if you do end up giving it a try. Number three is one that you've probably heard of. People talk about it a lot. It's called gratitude journaling. There are pre-made gratitude journals that are made with like three lines and the date for every single day of the year where you're supposed to write down three things that you are grateful for every single day. It can be at the start of your day, it can be at the beginning or the end of the day. Um, it can be whenever. The idea is that when you change your mind to think about three things that you appreciate, that you're grateful for and thankful for, that you're happy about in your life, this can actually impact a lot of how you think about your life every day. So people who do gratitude journaling um, sometimes report just being happier and just being like less in a, in a moody funk, I guess. Um, so this is like a very, very easy thing. Again, just like the other things on the list that we've talked about so far that you can either, that can be the whole journaling that you do. You can only do gratitude journaling every day. Just write three things down in a notebook that you're grateful for every day, or you can actually tack on gratitude journaling to your daily journaling practice. Um, you can do gratitude journaling in addition to your morning pages as well. Um, or you can kind of incorporate gratitude thinking into your morning pages. So it's just another way of journaling that can help you go through some unused notebooks or if you are looking to implement the practice of journaling into your life. Number four on the list, and these type, these journaling methods are in no particular order on this list, but number four is bullet journaling. This one is one that has really blown up in the world of journaling since 2018 when the method first came out. The bullet journal method was a book written by Ryder Carroll and it is like a planning, productivity, 
a mindfulness practice that really comes down to monthly planning. It involves creating an index. It involves um, using signifiers as you make lists in your bullet journal of your to-dos, of things you want to remember, of important dates. And it involves like migrating things from a monthly from a monthly practice. Um, so there's a whole lot involved in bullet journaling and we can probably do a video like only on bullet journaling <laughs> if, you, if you guys wanted to. I'm not gonna go into all of that, but just know that bullet journaling is one of the major types of journaling that people talk about. And it is a way of planning, but it's also supposed to be a way of being mindful and just kind of approaching your life. Um, bullet journaling is often done in a dot grid notebook because the dot grid is very conducive to making the charts, to making the monthly layouts that you usually do in a bullet journaling journal. That being said, bullet journaling can also be super possible in a grid, like a Stology editor series. So that's, that's pretty much all I'm gonna say on bullet journaling, but if you want inf more information, um, that is available in many places. And if you would like more information from us, let us know in the comments. Um, bullet journaling is great and we've heard about it a lot from people who come into the store, people who bullet journal and people who really, really believe in it, but it does take a lot of uh, consistency to it. Number five on the list is travel journaling. And of course I can't talk about travel journaling without really mentioning Traveler's Notebook, which is a great, travel journal. So travel journaling is really, um, if you have a trip coming up, like a traveling to another country, traveling abroad, or you can just think of it as like a little weekend outing. I don't think it has to be like, you know, you're going abroad on a trip to Japan or like to Italy or something. Um, cause that's not always doable for everybody. But if you want to try drop travel journaling and you have a little outing planned, um, to your local city or to your main street or whatever, whatever wherever wherever you live, um, that is definitely doable in a travel in a travel notebook in a travel journal way. So travel journaling is really just kind of um, a collecting little pieces, little artifacts along your travels. Uh, if you're going to a coffee shop, you can collect the. Um, business card, or you can collect little artifacts, little pieces of paper, little scraps that you can then incorporate into your travel journal and write a little bit about what you did that place, what you saw, what you ate, what the people you met or whoever or whatever. Um, so it's a great way of recording your memories from a location perspective, I guess, and an experience perspective with the actual artifacts that you collect along the way being like kind of the cornerstones of each journal entry. So um, that's travel journaling. A lot of people love to do it in a traveler's notebook, but you can actually use you can really use any of these notebooks um, and you can use any notebook for, for any of these different journaling methods. That brings me to number six, which is visual journaling or art journaling or scrapbooking. If you are more of a visual person and less of a writing long form kind of person, um, the travel journal might appeal to you in a you know different way and the scrapbook slash visual journal might appeal to you in a different way as well. So what is a scrapbook? I guess a scrapbook is a lot like a travel journal, but just for your everyday life. So it's a notebook where you are really more pasting in things, taping in pieces, it can be photos, it can be artifacts from your everyday life. If you go to a show, it can be the tickets um, from that show. It can be a receipt from a trip to the coffee shop or if you went shopping and bought a new sweater, it can be the receipt for that or the tag for that. So it's like keeping all these little scraps that you associate with memories and putting them into your notebook using tape, using glue, or however you want to put them in and creating a visual scrapbook and a visual memory book for your life in that way. Those are the six ways to journal in your unused notebooks. I hope this video 
helped you get some ideas, got the ball rolling, got your juices flowing on how you might start a journal either in an unused notebook that you have lying around, or if you are someone who is looking to get into the practice of journaling, hopefully one of these six ways of journaling can get the ball rolling for you. So thank you all so much for watching and let us know in the comments if you have any questions or a request for another video. We'll be happy to read through all the comments and get all of your feedback. So thank you all so much and see you in the next one. Bye.